Welcome back to the Bug Junkie Podcast. Guys, we're right back in another week. What's been going on? Man, we got a lot done Shoot. this week. Yeah. On the who's on board is gonna take a minute to talk about this week. Man, <laughs> I tell you, we, we no, it ain't gonna take me long. Yeah. <laughs> what so Mark, what'd you do this week? You didn't go fishing with us. We all went fishing. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about that. I'm you did there... go fishing last week. Yeah. yeah, I got to. I must have bought the discount fishing trip or something. You know, I only got the the ten pounder. No, we uh, I went and worked on duck holes and kind of got some stuff moved out of the field. Got the stuff out of the farmer's field so we can get ready to put crop in. And I see any ducks covered up. That's the way it is. Pissed me off, man. It was it was ducks everywhere, and I'm out there in the field in my waders, and ducks are landing twenty yards from me. Why is that? Because they got one a calendar. Week, one. Two weeks before then, if you'd have went out there, you'd have saw some birds. They would have been a mile high. Yeah, and they wouldn't have been a light in front of the blind. They wouldn't to come down. They know. they know when season's over, people quit shooting at them. Oh, yeah, they've been getting shot at all up the Mississippi River for months. I don't think the ducks ever truly get to Mississippi till now. You think so? Like, <clears> I honestly <throat> don't understand why they don't push duck season back one month. Open it at Christmas and let it go to the end of February. Don't even have that Thanksgiving. Yeah, because you ain't no ducks here. You're shooting mm-hmm. local ducks. You're not shooting migratory birds. I don't know. I think they need to push it back because it never fails. The last usually you have a good hunt the last week of the season, normally. Oh, BJ, our our uh, wood duck hunting buddy, took us with him a few weeks back. They him and his dad and brother went down to Mexico. Did y'all see all the birds they shot? I didn't know. Man, they waxed them. Did he? Like, probably probably overheated two guns. <laughs> what were they shooting <clears throat> there though? Uh, you, I don't think they take their own guns. I think no, they shoot. Th- yeah, yeah, I think they spy guns, shells, yeah. and everything there. And, uh, I mean, they were all. They were shooting cinnamon teal and all kinds of different ducks that we don't see. I yeah. didn't see any mallards in there, but, he, but uh, it looked pretty cool when they had them stacked up. And they got to go uh, pheasant hunting too. There's a pheasant or a quail, one of the two. After they duck hunted in the morning, so I gotta get I gotta get some more info on that trip. Yeah, because they flew down to Texas, and then I guess somebody picks them up and they take them across the border <laughs> into wherever they go to the lodge, and that's what. And I think you can either duck hunt and quail or, do- or pheasant hunt or dove hunt or you can uh bat trophy bass fish so did you take any pictures like where they were like the hole i don't they know were in? i didn't see any of that i wonder if they were in the ocean or if they were you know in some yeah. kind of slack water off there um, i think it was or... like coast uh, they would be consider- considered like coastal, coastal ducks waters. but it's yeah. probably more uh, like coastal marsh because he kind of explained to me where where they were going that's what it sounded like to me but it sounded i mean we got to check into one of those hunts. Yeah, that would be a fun hunt. We supplement our no ducks in Mississippi with the little uh, mallard limit and <laughs> here, <laughs> here locally and then go down to Mexico. And I wonder if Mexico shoot. even has a season down there. I don't sure know they if do. they follow a season. I don't think they do it year-round, so they probably do. There ain't no limit. No. I don't think there's a. I think they limit you on the number of shells. Like you can only shoot. <laughs> Crap! I'm in trouble. Four cases a day. Or something <laughs> yeah. like we're in trouble. We're gonna kill five birds. Yeah. <laughs> you can shoot four cases and tear up two guns. I was, I was gonna say probably to keep from melting the barrels off the shotguns. Yeah, yeah, they have to put a limit on you. That over and under will catch hail down there. I don't know if you can bring the ducks <laughs> back though. Oh, really? I, don't, I think yeah. I'm, they probably. I think they on the hunts like that they feed like local communities or yeah. something with them they probably it might be i know off. deer hunting you go to canada you can't bring the meat back i'm pretty sure really mm-hmm. it goes to what the indian reservation yeah, most, most of your like canadian that. hunts are indian Reva- indian reservation they have some you can go uh hunting up there too duck hunting but i don't know if you can bring the duck <clears> back either I mean, they kill a ton of birds in like august up there i wonder if ducks are like their deer just huge <laughs> like a 10 pound mallard or like, something you know you never know probably so because they the gotta be they bigger down here the, all the weight they've lost and stuff like that yeah. from flying calories they burn i would imagine they are a little fatter up there where they you know nest at for most of the summer but we did learn something and i didn't pay much attention to it so if you noticed that you had the cameras out in front of the duck blinds did you pull those i did i got them in the truck Good. um but the last day that we actually seen a ton of ducks was a full moon night. Like you could see, like you had headlights on, like it was broad daylight at midnight. And then, so we got to, I didn't think nothing about it when Mr. Charlie got to doing some research on it. And he was talking about how the ducks feed on full moon nights and how much like they eat just on full moon nights. And that's like your good days, just like opposite of deer hunting. You know, usually deer hunting full moon, you don't see crap the next day. Yeah, Duck hunting's opposite. And he done some research on it, got to reading up on it, but I'm going to get that article and kind of look at it some more, but it was pretty interesting. And he was saying how, like, 
how many, how much the ducks feed. Like if you have a rice field and it's covered, 20 acre rice field and it's covered up in ducks, how much they physically eat per night and how long that rice field will actually sustain those ducks. And see, I'm wondering if that didn't hurt us this year when all them geese were out there, if they just mowed that field down, you know. Cleaned it out. That's yeah. why the birds didn't come back to it. Well, you just didn't have near the grain we did early season. You got 10,000 snow geese on the hole. For a week. For a week solid. Man, they are sucking up some food. Not only that, I mean, they're destroying that field. Just oh, yeah. If you've ever been in a field after they've walked around in it or been in it, it is. It's like having hogs out yeah, there. It's, anything that was edible, they've mashed it into the mud. But we got some plans for next year. I think we're going to change what fields we flood for duck hunting. We got, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of building a sure enough duck blind, like a comfortable duck blind, like heaters, somewhere to go hang out, cook, coffee maker, you name it. Talking my language now. Like go out there and, <laughs> and sit. Who breakfast cares? Breakfast in the blind. Yes. They give you something to do except sitting there wishing you had some ducks. I don't know if it'll work, but I got thinking. I got an old 16 foot trailer. The axles are messed up on it anyway. I wouldn't mind building one on that trailer and just pulling it out there when it's dry and then letting it float around it, brush it in. That'd be pretty easy. I, you know, so last week I went, took the, the boys over to Mallard Limit just to get some dog work in, Sadie. And they, the, the blind we hunted out of was, it was like a cotton trailer. Had the metal floors on the axles. They just hauled it out in the hole and then built – all the sides and the front around it and the top and all that. So you just got on a trailer pretty much. Had old church pew in there <laughs> for everybody to sit on. I mean, it's it was super comfortable. You talk, I mean, you could have hunted five, six people easy out of it. You yeah, know, everybody had idea. their own little yeah. window to shoot out of. There's one for sale in Hernando right now. A guy's got for sale. It's a pontoon boat. It's a 24-foot or 20-foot pontoon boat. That would make a heck of a it's float. In Hernando. Line. Really? It looks good. I mean, it's. It's built out well. It's all metal frame structure on top of the pontoons, and then if you could put a metal grate floor on it or something. It already is. Oh, it is. Like the whole thing, they done. It looks like extruded aluminum is what yeah. they are. Like aluminum studs, they built it all out of. It looks good. Might not be a bad idea either. Yeah, maybe not. So y'all went fishing while I'm down there working in the duck hole, and by. 20 minutes in, y'all blowing my phone up with pictures of catfish. Well, we let you, we let that go. I think it, like it was. So we went, me and Mark, my dad went so sun, we were, sun, yeah. that Sunday. So where, so where did y'all go? So we, we put were, in, we put in behind Fitzgerald's on at, at Tunica. Tunica, Tunica River, River Landing or yeah, River went, Park. And went up the river for a little bit and then turned and went back, back down the river almost to Harden Point Hunting Club. So we, we actually traveled right at rough, roughly something, 50 something miles. Did y'all make it up as far as we were? No, 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 we didn't go up. We didn't go up. We, a mile. Yeah, we could, yeah, we could still see the casino and boat ramp where we was at, as far as going up. We went further down than we did. Yeah, we went up. down, and it all depends on what Mr. Davis had understood. Like, you know, how how hard he's fished that week, what holes, and whether yeah. he, whether he wants to go back or move to a different location. What was the weather like when y'all went? Cold, cloudy, cold, and yeah. windy. Yeah, cold, cloudy, windy. Yeah, what it got. Time? We got a little sun later in the day, but it was. The cold, front, the cold front was coming through from Saturday night on into Sunday. We were after the cold front. Yeah. And it was it was chilly out. I mean, we seen, like, seen, that's funny to say, we seen fish. Yeah. But, I mean, we did see a bunch of fish on the scope. scope but, and, I mean, we was, they were fishing the hole, but you, they just, they but wasn't going to watch it. They, I mean, we yeah. caught a couple. I had a big time. Like, I would go back tomorrow. I mean, no problem. I mean, it's it's a really, really neat thing, but. 20 minutes in and I don't got 10 pictures from y'all and Mike <laughs> holding up a freaking whale. And <laughs> <laughs> so when we went, we caught it on a warm day, really cows are sunny. We went. Yeah. Cows, cows, yeah, cows up, standing up. <laughs> weren't laying down. We met. So we went out of, was it bass landing? Bass landing. Yeah. Bass Put landing. in at bass landing there on the river. Super nice. It's a DeSoto County boat ramp on the Mississippi river. I had no idea it was there. Like when I was younger, we used to ride down there and get on the levee, shoot 22s and we could, you know, just, Hang out and stuff. And it wasn't a ramp back then, but the I guess the county went in and yeah, it's it's very very one. nice. Uh, like I say it was what probably we the only ones fishing that day. I guess yeah. there some guys boat fishing, but several trucks there from you know I guess working on the barges and stuff. But yeah, it was, it was nice. I hadn't, I mean we've been to, I've been to all those boat ramps up and down at Levy at some point and don't ever remember that one yeah. at all. I mean it's I'm if sure it was there is what happened. It was just a rock. Yeah. Way to put a boat in, but now it's a good concrete ramp goes out where, to the water. Where, how do you get? Where do you go to get to it? Old sixty, yeah, pretty much Old sixty one, and then whatever road that is, it goes. See, I've never Bass been to Landing Road. I've never been to that 
the levee up this far north. Like I've only been to the Mississippi River levee Tunica South. Like I've never thought about like running yeah. out walls and like actually going to the river out that far. Back in the day, we would get on the levee. Right now, I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but there was no like it was like, posted or anything kept us. No up, cattle but, gates or anything. Yeah, I mean there was and there were still cows on it. People always had. There's always been cattle gates, but I don't think they kept them locked up yeah. like they do now. As I'm far not as sure, but traffic. I don't think you own the levee. I think the core on yeah, the I think core, is, core does on that, yeah. But the, I think you're allowed to run cattle, you know, off. Yeah, they, pro- yeah, from they, one, if you have property on both sides of the levee, you can they probably you can fence it, too. but you can't yeah. keep nobody off of yeah. it. So I how many fish did y'all catch? I, really, I, I, honestly, I, asked, I don't know. Probably don't know, 10 or 12. Man. I think it was a dozen. We kept, what, five, five or six? Weeks. Yeah. So we were catching – Anywhere from the smallest fish I think we caught was what six and a half, yeah, seven pounds, there, something six, like seven that. Pounds. And you want we wanted our keepers in that six to twelve range. I mean, you don't want to eat a bigger catfish than that. We're gonna get in, Mike. You're gonna tell us why, but yeah, we'll uh. But so we kept the one small ones we caught. We were gonna put a few in the live wells. We want to do some recipes, have some meat to eat. You know, I was like, I want to eat all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can say that in the video. <laughs> yeah. You want to eat all of them. But Jamie caught one that was 26, yeah. 26 and a half, something like yeah. that. That was the second fish we caught. Yeah, it actually, I was thinking, because when me and Mark went, mine was, what, 34 pounds, 33 pounds? 33 pounds and 40 inches. And this one tugged as hard or harder than that. I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than 30 pounds. but yeah, we It was still a good fish, real good fish. We were watching yours, so that one that you caught, it was 40 and a half inches long. Mm-hmm. He measured it, and yeah. it was 40 and a half, so it was almost the same. Same length. Same yeah. length. It's a, I mean, it was, a, heck, it was fun catching it. It's a good fish. You think that size fish, like you're finna fight it, but them reels and rods he got don't yeah. play. So on his, his boat was a 26-foot 26 sea 26-foot arc. sea arc. It, we had plenty of room in it. Oh, that, yeah. that boat's a tank Four on water. Man, yeah. Well, he's got Big those. high sides. Feels real safe. It's enclosed. He's got this... Vinyl enclosures you put on it stays warm. Probably could have fished two up front if he really wanted to. Yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, he can go. He can go. Uh, I think four poles or six poles up front and one or two men. Plus, it's act. It'd be tight, but you could add two more seats to the back of the boat. Yeah, too. you wouldn't have any room to fish. Yeah, I wouldn't have fished no more than what we took. Yeah, it was ideal. Cause it was, you know, when we were filming and stuff, uh, having yeah. to move around and not get in right. David's way because I felt like I was in a way a lot of yeah. times. And yeah, I would go back in there and sit back down. You know, I wanted to get out there and. I, ideally, stuff. you can fish three men and the captain perfect. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's set up for that. And what we did was we put in back to Jamie, you backed the boat down in the water for us there. And me and David and Mikey, when they got on the boat, it wasn't nothing to off we went. And within, we didn't ride. We went 15 kind of minutes straight across. We didn't, ride, we didn't even ride that far. We 15 didn't go minutes. That's probably a five or 10 minute yeah. ride. We, probably we were in the drop lines. We went up just a little piece, you know. He was he was running up river, but he was really going to the yeah uh, shooting across bank. to the Arkansas side. Yeah, and you he know? pulled up one of his holes over there, and just we just eased through there, and he was watching that sonar, yep. and he you know he checked the hole. He was you know a certain thing he was looking for there, and he seen there's you know a couple of good fish in this hole. Now I'm sure that was one of the ones that Jamie caught, but you know, what a uh, what depth yeah. were y'all fishing that day? Um, I think that was fifty something foot. Sixty five was about the. Average. Yeah. Now there was that one hole that cut in behind that one jetty was pretty yeah. deep. It was like 180. Yeah. It was a pretty deep hole. Yeah, but we did. But most of them were in yeah, 50, 50, 60 50, foot, 60 yeah. foot range, and you could just see them suspended on the water. Now there was a lot of we saw a lot of carp on the depth finder or fish finder, and we didn't see it. He didn't point out a spoon bill. Like see, we saw, seen a lot yeah, of those. The day we way. was fishing, it was very very obvious. He could zoom in. You could see the eye sockets on the spoon bill. Well, see, we got gotten some rain the night. Was it the night before? Uh, maybe day before. Day before. Day before. Day before. Day before. I wonder if that changed but we, all those spoon bills. could have. We had a, it was a cl- really good clear day when we went. The water was not that choppy at all. No, it was pretty slick. Yeah. That's was, as calm as I've ever seen the Mississippi River. Really? It was oh, good yeah. till about, at least say, 11, 30, 12 o'clock, somewhere through there. Yeah, and when the front started coming through, that's when the bite shut down. Yeah, it shut it all down. So we caught majority of the – we had eight fish in the boat. Probably within an hour and 15, 20 minutes, yeah. something like that. And once we dropped, we dropped three poles on each side. Two mm-hmm. of them were straight down poles, and two on each side were casted out poles. He was baiting them with de- detail, y'all, all oh, the bait. Sh- shad, had. Mikey's big fish was on Shad. Uh, shad and then uh, Skipjack. Skipjack, Skip yeah, Jack. Cut, cut bait. Hot sauce. Yeah. yeah. And hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Killer hog hot sauce. 
But he Hot sauce did get some hits. We never did. We never did get one in a boat. Got a big one on. Yeah. But the big, so he would take the bigger bait and cut just steaks out of it, kind of. And that's what he would bait them with. He had these big, I don't know, those two alt, three alt hooks. Uh, he said, I asked him that. He said that uh, depending on the brand, is one was a seven, one was eight. Oh, they were that big. Yeah. Them hooks don't play neither. No. no they were, Once they're on, they ain't getting off. We didn't lose. I, yeah, that was one of the questions I had for him. How often does somebody, like you get a fish hooked up, you're reeling it in, how often do you not land it? Because we didn't have any that got. We didn't off. lose a fish. Yeah, it's no. different. It's a different fishing method than what, like I say, I would me or Jamie, either one used to like fishing the Coldwater River, like with Daddy when we tight line. I mean, we're used to like setting the hook hard, right. and and that's what you got to get. That's what he was saying. Your bass fisher that's yanking and steady setting the hook, cat, you know, like small river fishing we was doing setting the hooks. Like, don't work. No, no, it don't work on them. When that hook, when that pole bows over, you about three spins on the reel, and he's you got on there. it. You ain't got to pull up on it. No, no. Just, no. He's already on it. Yeah. Just, Big as them fish are, they're taking a bite. And I mean, they're eating. They're not trying to play with the bait. They're yeah. eating it, you know. Yeah, see, just for experience from fishing in the lake, stuff like that, those bigger fish don't. They just, when they want it, they're going to suck it yeah. up, and he's just going to keep swimming with it. He's gone. Yeah. And you got to turn him around and bring him back. So, so and all I, those fish we caught were that size except for that one or two. After we dropped lines, how, how long do y'all think it was till? We caught, we the, caught the very first fish. He barely got all of them out. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, he was already hooked into yeah. one. Yeah, long well, did, you, who, who, did you bring Mikey, the first one? Mikey, Mikey got, got the, the first, first one, one, and you caught that second. I got the second one. And we just I, think I got the third out. one. Yeah, we, we just kind of rotated. Out. It was really whoever wanted to. No, it's. I'd recommend, especially somebody got a kid or somebody that, or whatever. That's man. It's it's definitely an experience now. It's just, it's no different. You deer hunting, you're deer hunting, you're fishing. It's not no hundred percent guarantee you fishing to go no, to cook yeah, no, fish no. or whatever. And David accommodates you. You ain't gonna find anybody no better to take care of you what he does. And he uh, he can't guarantee fish, but he's gonna do his best to put you on them. Yeah, he he knows where they're at, but you can't control. Bite. You can't make that fish bite. No, you can't control the bite. I don't care what you do. I mean, it, in in years past, it's been the same way as like what we did. You know, at a certain time of the day, they're pretty much done yeah. feeding. They don't yeah. want to feed. Yeah. you know that time of the day. And if you don't catch that time frame, then if you go with, you know, a group of guys or your family, whoever you enjoy would go with, it's worth it just going. I mean, just we caught, yeah, we caught. How three. many times do you get to get on the Mississippi River and see it? Like, yeah, like from that, that perspective. From that, yeah, I hadn't. I mean, I'd, I'd been with him one other time. I took Michael a couple of years ago, and listened to him tell you kind of the history of the river and you know why things are where they are and how it works. Well, you just I learned more of that. Yeah. Just watching the water, you understand yep. that river ain't no joke. Oh, even David said he had people that book. They don't care nothing about fishing. Yeah. They want to go. Oh, he does know. like a sightseeing yeah, tour they too. Do river boat, you know, just because we can see just riding down the rivers. It's I could have sat in the boat with him all day and never dropped a rod. Oh yeah. Now David knows that river. Yeah, he's yeah. been fishing it for twenty something years. He said, or it was not been longer long than that. that. Yeah, it's a long time. But you think about like what he goes through for those customers stuff because you don't go buy those shad. No, he had a cast he has net to go on, right? Cast net. Where did where did he say he got those? Arkham Butler. Arkham Butler. So he goes he goes to Arkham Butler whenever they book a trip that night or that you know evening or whatever I guess. And, and that ain't a guarantee catching them there. <laughs> <No. laughs> that ain't as easy as it sounds. He said them days get mad at him down there. He'll yeah. go down there and as long as they're not, I mean, if they're set up fishing, he throws out there and he pulls all the these fish up. They don't like it. <laughs> That's what me and me and him were talking about. I was telling him about that. I said, "You, I said, where do you throw yours at?" You know, and he was telling me he was like. Go to this spot right here because, you know, not a lot of crappie fishermen are in there. And, you know, yeah. when I used to go catch them the same way David is, I used to walk down in there where the main crappie fishing hole was, and I would sling my net out. Usually I did it when there wasn't nobody down there early, early in the morning before I went fishing. And yeah. people would walk down there on me and try to run me off because I was throwing that net. What, did they think you were trying to catch crappie or something? They were just messing you're, their fishing. You're, you're, you're stirring their, the water up. Oh, yeah, you're you're messing their hole up. A couple oh, it pissed of them hand. off. There's been several times I pull a big old slab crappie in that net <laughs> and look at them and shake it and just set it back oh, in the water and let man. it go. <laughs> Is yeah. that illegal to yes. cast if you yeah, keep you got to get rid of it. it yeah. Yeah. That was one of the things. You had to put a hole in his mouth. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you catch a bunch of them little bitty crappie or something oh, like that, yeah. you got to pick through them and get them out. Get them out, yeah. Because if you got shad in there and you got one of them, that yeah, is a game. Very legal. Yeah. You're in trouble. So it's it's perfectly legal to do the, the shad. Yeah. 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 I used to have a metal cage. It was like a 
I can't remember. I think Jimmy made it at some point, but we would go the spillway like at the mouth, and you hang it over the edge with a rope and mm-hmm. drop it down and pull it up. And you talking about you catch some junk. Really? I mean, in we, the fast water? Yeah. yeah. Like you drop yeah. it in the mouth. Now it ain't wide open. You're but against the wall. Yeah, yeah, you're against the wall up there at the mouth of it. Yeah. And we used to, that's how we used to run trot lines. We used to go drop them and hey, catch it. How long it. a rope did you have on that thing? 50 or 60 foot. Yeah. You tie it to the rail because a lot of times yeah, you may yeah, not hold yeah. it, you know. And then it goes to the bottom and you mm-hmm. pull it right. Do you let it sit? And hang it don't out. stay long. It don't stay long. You just dip it. Set it, it long it? enough for the fish to move and then come back over the yeah. top of and it. Pull it right back, back up. up. Is it baited? Mm-mm. No. It's just a ca- like it's just a, a funnel. Ca- yeah. I've okay. got one in the shed. Do you really? Mm-hmm. I don't see that. Michael would enjoy. We need to go down there and get a video of doing that. Is that legal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we were yeah. we done it. We caught enough fish that box. time to like me and Hunter did to fish what we needed to fish. We had a little styrofoam cooler full. Well, these guys come up and it was I can't remember what they were fishing for, but uh, it was a couple of Mexicans. They come up and they're like, "Hey, you mind catching us some bait?" And I said, "No, that's fine." So he brought me a their orange like igloo cooler. They kept their water in, poured his <laughs> water out, brought it. And he said, "He said fill it up." I said, "All right." And I asked him, so what do you do with it? He said, we're going to fish with it. And what we don't use is we're carrying home eating. I was like, eating? Like shad? Eat them shad? No. But, Heck, Mikey ate them on the boat. What are you talking about? Yeah, he'll eat anything. <laughs> but it is fun. <laughs> Mikey. Eat Mikey off those yeah. TV commercials. Y'all going to give me a hard time about my lunch. <laughs> I will get to that, too. <laughs> yeah, I want to see that fish fish trap I in see, action. I think mine's still in the shop at Daddy's. Might be. Because Jimmy, my quick. Uncle Jimmy had one. And then I went. Well, I was in Votech at the time. We was in high school, and I made one when I was in Votech too. But it was a square style cage. Is it about the size of like a milk crate or bigger? A little bit bigger. Uh, the ones I got is about it's as long as a meter more. Yeah, I mean, okay. I got and some round ones that are like that. You know? Yeah. It ain't huge. Is it it's just one like, way in. They can't get out. Yeah. Right, yeah. Or, okay. You just drop in your old spaghetti bowl strainer. You just dropping a big one of them in the water right. and pick yeah, them up. Top's open. Yeah, with the oh, top's top, full yeah. open. Yeah. Top, you just top's open. Yeah. So you can tell when you start pulling up if you got fish oh, yeah. in or not by looking mm-hmm. over. Right? Yeah. We'll go do that. Yeah, we got to do that. How long does it take? Like Five minutes. Yeah. You know, yeah. It takes longer to drive down there than if, we if leave, they're, uh, if they're in fish. that. Yeah, if, if yeah. they're against that wall and stuff, you know. You just got to be, what is it? You got to catch the spillway when they're opening it right. Like if it's full on, you ain't going to do nothing. Yeah, it'll swoop your basket away. It'll just yeah. bounce on top of the water. But you catch it when it's kind of governed back about quarter way open. It's still a bunch of water coming through it. You can do pretty good. I bet you it's shut down now as low as everything is around there. Cold it's, water up there 51 looks super low. If I can't find mine, I'll make another one. Yeah. We'll do it. We're doing that. Catching bait's fun. It's, it's as fun as fishing. It's just <laughs> part of it. Yeah. So we went from fishing. You went duck hunting Saturday? No, you went duck shooting. Yeah, you went duck shooting I went Saturday. Training the dog. Yeah, that was fun. Real fun. So now it, the Mallard's Croft and but Bahia, I guess. Mallard Limit. Is it Limit? Yeah, Croft is the, the fancy rental side. place. Oh, I've been calling for the wrong yeah. thing. No, oh. they have got, it's a, I guess it, they're not in a fence, but if there was a way to fence in some ducks, that's what it would have. <laughs> but it's a controlled, like, I guess they raised it. The pen raised, I don't know, they don't keep them in a pen year round. No, they're farm, they're, I mean, like, I guess they call them farm raised duck. duck, yeah. Yeah, all mallards. You get to shoot, I think the limit's four, which, is that, that's all the mallards you can kill anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. the limit mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah, that's, that's why they call <clears> Unless you go to the duck flush. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the year. But I don't know how many birds that they have a year, and then you hunt them, there's two days a week, I think you can go on Tuesdays and Saturdays. It's like. 350 bucks a man, something like that. But, man, it is fun. But, I mean, uh, teaching a kid or a dog no, or I mean, whatever. I do it for it's, the dog. It's, I mean, there's, no, there's no better way. I mean. Guaranteed dog got, training. Yeah, she got 20 retrieves within an hour and a half. It's fast, too. Yeah. And you serve breakfast. Like They do full-blown breakfast now. See, I, I didn't like, do that last year when we went mm-hmm. It's good for a dog, and it's good for us in Mississippi that's not going to get a lot of ducks for the freezer. Yeah. We can I mean, go if you're get ducks over in Arkansas. Well, actually, so it's after season. Yeah, and so there was a bunch of guys there working their dog. I mean, they had I think they have six holes, six blinds, and they were full. Like they couldn't take no more hunters that day. So, and and everybody I talked to, I was like, you know, they they'd been shooting ducks duck season or whatever, but they still want to hunt. Yeah. So, you still want to shoot and hang out? I mean, it's quick. You're not, you know, you don't have to go spend the night. They have boarding there. Like if you want to get a room, stay all night. They have a, they have it set up. Let's clear it up. You don't have to call. Yeah. You don't have to use decoy. We had to, do, we he, he, we had to throw out decoy. Y'all this did time. this time. Yeah. Because he said they hadn't been like, 
they've been t- putting the decoys out and throwing them in so the ducks would not want not get used to seeing the yeah. decoys and they would when they were in there they would come to the holes but you didn't have to call the ducks are calling for you yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean that's a lot of the water ducks. they started hitting the water and they might be on the other end of your hole but i mean them truckers are very vocal but it gives you a good opportunity if, if you've oh, never yeah. went there you know and you've never experienced it it's fun to go one time you know and you can yeah. use it for what you want to i mean you go and practice before I'll tell you what. the season starts i mean because when i took wheel and when we took Will and Michael, I mean, they ain't never really the big duck hunt, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, so getting them used to shooting at that big, fast flying bird, you know, because they are. It's a good obs- like you can observe how the ducks are on, yeah, somewhat working the decoys, right. landing the decoys, what their flying patterns are. I, I mean, think it teaches you patience because we sat there and we took we kind of played knockout, and we took <laughs> turns, and it's like okay, we want you to pick out the green head and just shoot a green head, yeah. don't shoot a Susie. And so when a group of two or three would come over, we had the boys looking and they're watching. Okay, I think that back one's a green head. Let it make a pass. When it comes back, try to shoot it. And they weren't just cupping up right in front yeah. of us. I mean, it was a lot of pass shooting, side to side action. Uh, but I mean, you didn't have to worry about having, you know, camo, face paint on or staying concealed. We were all, you know, we were joking, having a good time. Bring you a loaf of bread. You throw it out if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> we did bring biscuits. <laughs> we didn't feed the ducks, so dog might eat one. But it was fun. I mean, we took our time and I mean, had a good hunt. It was it was cold that morning, but it warmed up a little bit. We were done by nine. Th- we had Will back at the house by ten, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about ten o'clock when yeah. I came in. He was he was already on the couch. <laughs> and if you've never been duck hunting, oh, you would think you were a, a pro when you go there. You would think this is easy. I mean, Dad, or somebody's not confident, experienced with calling. I mean, yeah. you can practice calling and hear what that duck's saying, and yeah. You don't necessarily call the duck in, yeah. but it gives you opportunity to practice too. I th- and I mean, you can only shoot one box of shells, so it ain't like you're just out there blasting at everything too. Yeah, but I mean, that's another thing. I, I I looked at it, and Jamie, you had a buddy. He paid six. I mean, uh, average lease on a hole is five six thousand five hundred dollars, probably over in Arkansas, right? Yeah, yeah. Buddy, of mine's got a lease. Uh, you're not leasing a pit. This guy's got several pits on this property, and he's paying roughly six thousand a year. To carry him and his sons over there, and then yeah, I, think so, it's a, I think it's a hundred, a hundred fifty bucks if he brings a guest extra. But so I mean, they kill a lot that. of ducks. But I mean, you take it ain't guaranteed. No, it's not guaranteed. No, you divide that by three fifty and see how many times you can get. The, yeah. yeah, you know, and yeah, it's good. It's close to our house too. Yeah. I mean, it's what a forty minute ride. It's it's even it's not even sure, that. Ain't even that from my house. Yeah, once I get on six, uh, it ain't that from your house. It's 20 maybe minutes. twenty minutes. Maybe it is. Yeah, it's thirteen miles once you get on sixty nine to. By hell yeah, and then right up by hell yeah, two, three miles, I think. It's 16 miles from your house, something like that. It ain't far. Well, but what's our main topic? What are we doing today? I ain't there talking about catfishing. <laughs> we ain't got into all of it yet. We're going to talk about it. Well, Jamie's got us a whole bunch of stuff to talk well, about I just today. got too much stuff to talk. Yeah, but we, so, Mikey, tell us about the big fish. Now, when I say, so Mikey... We got out there fishing, and he's got a brother catch Randy. A fish. He's got Randy, who's the uh, he's the outdoorsman. <laughs> if <it's, laughs> he, he's gonna catch the bigger fish, he's gonna kill more deer than you. He's gonna kill more squirrels. In all honesty, but, Mikey's brother, he probably should have been an Indian. I mean, seriously, <laughs> well, I mean, we are. Just, we just survival. ain't the kind we I thought mean, we was. We, Indian. Yeah. Randy, it don't matter what it is. He can <laughs> he can trap it, catch it, kill it catch it whatever don't matter i want to get randy on the podcast uh, <laughs> be a good you one. better be ready for that one i'm ready i'm gonna have, bomb the wild turkey it's gonna be buck juggies after hours yeah we, yeah. we might better do that in the night we're gonna have to uh probably add one of them bleep buttons on here or something yeah. maybe. <laughs> but, but but you told him you're going catfishing and he couldn't go because he had his kids yeah and i had asked him to go and he yeah. he he uh anyways him and his wife you know she works nights at the hospital and comes home he's like i can't get there till like eight maybe nine o'clock before i can even leave the house that's well I'm, I'll, I'll see if somebody else gonna go and we'll go another time i'll try to so me know. and jamie got to go that's how yeah. yeah thank you randy i <laughs> yeah, appreciate it you, randy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but anyway so you know randy's randy has caught more freaking fish than any somebody i know it and he's he's very good at it i mean he's very strategic about it you know you think he's just a you know, a redneck that don't know what the hell he's doing. He's just messing around. But he, he's he got uh-huh. a strategy to everything he does. And he understands it, knows it, and it's like second nature to him. Yeah. And he's caught his big – I think his biggest one on a rod and reel was 45 pounds. And I think it was a flathead. Um, 
but he's caught spoon bills that he couldn't. He said he couldn't even pull out of the water. Like he couldn't get them up on the bank. He had to just turn them loose right there. But anyways, so when we went fishing Friday, uh, of course Jamie caught a fish. I sent you know the picture of the fish that Jamie caught that one that's twenty six pounds. Randy was like, "Hey man, you know we own them. <laughs> we're on them. We're catching fish. You should have came." And he sends it back. He's trying, tra- he trying to trump yeah, me right off the bat. He's trying to trump yeah. you right off the bat. One up you. Just he, let you know. Yeah. And he turned around and sent that 45-pound fish back to me, an older picture that he had, or I don't remember when he caught it, but sent it back. So, well, there's one 45-pound. John ain't topped that one yet. And, I mean, it uh, was We was on a mission later. after that. We was on a mission. Yeah. <laughs> I caught a damn dinosaur. So, we hung into that. You hung into that fish. And we did, did – Jamie, did you know that fish was going to be that big? No, I mean at first. At I first, it was kind of. I thought it was about yours. Looked like it was pulling harder. Yeah, I, I think Mike is swimming up river towards yeah. us because it wasn't. At Mike first, is, he was pulling about that like that one I caught. Yeah, and I forget what it was, sixteen or something. Yeah, because yeah. I was asking, is he putting out Mike? Is he pulling it? And he, and he didn't really have the rod bowed up, bowed over that hard, and he was just kind of at first. <laughs> yeah. Now he pulled a little drag at first mm-hmm. when I first picked the rod up. I seen it just kind of eh, come out of there and. I wasn't Mike gaining no ground on him, but he was just at a steady swim. And then I started gaining a little ground on him. I was like, well, they, you know, it's about like some of them other ones have been catching. It's a good fish, but it's not. <laughs> Even David didn't think it Mm-mm. was that good. And then when he got within maybe 30 yards of the boat or something. I think it was pretty much where. when you got him to where he was having off the bottom and come yeah. up. That's yeah. when. That's he, when, when the line went straight and so, he wasn't coming. So yeah. That's when he David said, on. that's a good fish. <laughs> he turned He got on. his big net out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he would have he would pulled the rod the out of water. your hand. Yeah, the rod yeah and I had water. to get a man grip on that rod because <laughs> yeah. he was pulling in and he was pulling drag. And I was like, "Good night." This, yeah, he's a little bit bigger. He's pulling pretty hard now, you know, but still didn't know what he is. And that's the fun thing about fishing there under that murky water. You don't know. You feel it. You don't know. You know, it could it could have been a you know yeah. car, ten pound <laughs> polywog. You know, I knew which one what the ones I caught was. I was like, "Oh, frying pan right here." Yeah. <laughs> But that thing got up when it finally come up. Yeah, David said it. Oh, yeah. David, it David up, was just said, as excited as you that were. That was a pretty good one. Well, so, he don't. I mean, it ain't guaranteed you're gonna catch him. That's a trophy catfish. Yeah, any I'm, day. Yeah, have y'all? I mean, I ain't oh, never caught none that big on a rod reel. Yeah, no, I've never caught nothing on a pole. I'm talking about in the ocean or anywhere that was that big. Yeah, I don't guess I have neither. He was forty six and a half. How many? How long he was, was forty eight and, and, and a half? Forty and, and a half long. long. Four yeah. foot long and weighed. 58. 50, 58 pounds. And it's probably big around. The pitcher probably don't do it just. It's probably big around a five-gallon bucket. I mean, yeah, not, I was looking back at some of the pictures, you know, and, and even some of the videos that we got, you know, I was looking at those fish, and I was telling Malcolm, you know, you're kind of back away, and it's with a phone, or you know, and it don't really do it as much just as that thing really. It don't tell you no. really how big that fish was. No. I watched the vi- – Jamie recorded a video of it. I watched it this morning, man. It's – that's gonna be. We'll, we'll get that put out on social media because that's that's gonna be a good video, catching that big fish. That, you got him all the way to letting him go, measuring him, all the stuff that David did to it, tagging it. Yeah, the tip of his tail. Mikey put like, his finger in his butthole. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got the story. <laughs> that damn. I, I, was he messing with you? I thought he was, I thought he was messing thing? with Did me. Did he do that to y'all? And y'all no, you? no. I don't know what kind uh, of fishing trip yeah. y'all paid for. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we didn't pay for the butthole experience. I can guarantee you that fish left that hole because I <laughs> violated him. <laughs> but they were dead serious. I'm talking. He about was dead serious. Never cracked a smile. I mean, he told Mike, he's like, "Hey, listen, you know, hold it, take a picture, put this, you know, take your left finger, take you, get you. your left hand, put under him, get your right hand, get your face it, get your I, finger." Put it right in his mouth. Mine had to be the middle finger neither, but he's I like, don't know. I went pinky first, and it went right on in, and then I went to the ring finger, and it, it was a little struggling. I got in, in there, and I looked at him. I said, are you freaking serious? I mean, I don't know if my middle finger is going to go in there and mess him up. And he, he said, you ain't got to do that, and I snatched it out real quick. <laughs> I told him that's a, that's what you do for alligators, to check their <laughs> super Sex, male yeah, or male female. female. You have to do that. No, y'all paid extra for that. <laughs> so you didn't get that. Well, no. next time, Mark, you get to get, we'll the, get to the butthole yeah. tour. <laughs> <laughs> so I still never figured out if it was for real or not. <laughs> he said he was. He said he was. He serious. said he said for real. He, he said when you do that, serious. the fish will hold still. Which I'm mad. Yeah, I would too. Are. His <laughs> eyes get big. Yeah, you his know, eyes get his mouth opens up. <laughs> yeah. He spits the hook out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go. You go to the doctor and he tells Look, you to bend over. You don't move neither. Yeah, uh-uh. I wasn't even there. And what I just gained out of this conversation, I got a real big question. Yeah. 
Why did you go ahead and just start with the pinky? Well, I didn't want. Why her, are you I trying to wanna, warm this catfish yeah. up for this? He's if got you, that big old middle finger. If you've ever been to the doctor and had one of these checks, you'll understand why I started with yeah. the pinky. He was just being courteous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said that's all right. I don't want to catch one of them fish. Yeah. Yeah. I, I stick to my, my, my skillet, skillet fish. Of eight to ten pound skillet. <laughs> we ain't even got a hold. Of was you like this. petting him at the same time? Like I was, I was being. Yeah, I was petting. At least him a tell bit. him it's gonna be okay, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> this is like it's hurting me a lot more. It's hurting you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> type situation. If he'd have come out and <laughs> 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 yeah, he popped it one time on him. <laughs> Uh, oh, God. Yeah, you better be glad yeah. I wasn't there. David probably just had a bunch of people call and cancel trips now. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we fished from eight, eight. Was it 8 o'clock on the water to 3 30. Yeah, 3 3 30. Yeah. Full day fishing, man. You don't get no better than that. No. We gotta, and we got to get David on here to talk more about yeah. what he does and what all he's seen. He got, got some, he got some explaining to do. Got, anyway. He got some explaining <laughs> to do on some stories. But if anybody is in, and he says he, people book from him from all over the country. Yeah. Yeah, we got several honest. people that book the same yeah. day, year after year after year. Yeah. You know, they want the same weekend. He's got a couple guys that uh, book him during tournaments. Like, there's one, the big one at the Bass Pro Pyramid. They launch out of there. They go and fish. And so he he guides um, tournament trips. He does whatever. But y'all check him out. <laughs> that's, maybe that's what we need to do, get in a tournament. <laughs> the buck junkies. The buck junkies get hey, in a tournament. Hey, we might be cat junkies. Well, gee, we're calling them butt junkies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a part of that. Yeah, I'm, 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 I want one of them boats, but a jet drive <laughs> to put on the white. Fishy. We can go over there and trout fish on the white and a boat like that. All four of us getting one boat. I, t- I told you I didn't found you one. Yeah, you got to get that set up, Mark. I we're, told we're you. This one you just give me the check and we'll go get it. Heck, y'all can be out of town. You just leave a credit card, me well, and Mike, hey, and we'll I've, book a trip and a boat and everything. I've booked yeah. us a red fishing trip. We're all going on in. Um, it May. Last June. week of May. Yeah. May. June, first it, week of June. Oh, is it yeah. moved to the first week of June? Yeah. Yeah. It's like the day after Memorial Day is when we're leaving. We're going down to Louisiana. I've it's seen like, the pictures of your website of that. That ain't no <laughs> average fishing trip. Oh, it's going to be fun. Oh, well, they got a lot to live up to. I can tell you that. Oh, if we or have to top half, David. If we have half the time on the boat, as we did fishing with David, it's going to be something. It was, you know, th- and that makes a huge difference with your captain and stuff like that and the people that run the boat yeah. if you and i've been on a crappy freaking boat before i've been on a good fishing once. trip with yeah. a bad deckhand and captain it yep. was awful yeah I'm, that's what i was thinking to say the the deckhand has had no personality the captain was an ass you know and i've been on one where they like, got the knockdown drag out fighting really <laughs> and threw the deckhand off the boat and we was wasn't we yeah it made his son go he's like <laughs> I thought, and that dude didn't talk to us for several hours that day. I was like, man, they pissed this dude off. He's going to put me out in the damn ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, yes, sir. I was. <laughs> I've never seen him fight. I've wanted to fight him, though. No, this was, this got this got rough that day. He got to eat it, didn't it? Yeah. And we ended up catching. He put us on some. I guess he felt bad. He had to show out. He put us on some fish that day. No, they got, what do you say? So y'all want to go out and fish all day? Or do you want to go out and catch a bunch of fish and be done? We're like, let's go catch a bunch of fish. And that guy. It was on. He put us on it now. <laughs> do you think that was – Did you, do you like that better than fishing on the river, though? Well, if you had your pick. They they both have It depends uniqueness. on experience, yeah. Yeah. I hadn't had a puking experience. Yeah, say, river yet. Uh, I've been puking on that <laughs> ocean boat. You and Heath would probably hold out better than on a river boat than yeah. would 30 miles out I don't, in the ocean. I tell you what, I enjoyed the uh, fishing on the river. I don't know if it's because it, don't it get feels any, like home and it's close. Uh, and, I think that's part of it. It's it's yeah. home to us. I mean, we're still in Mississippi, and that, that's, yeah. that's it's twenty miles from our house, around. and that's the first yeah. time we've all set foot on it. Yeah, you know? I mean, I like the fact that we ride past. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of river hunting clubs. You ride past and see mm-hmm. some unreal cabins on the lake on, on on the edge of the river on the levee, and then you see wildlife. I and mean, it's, it's yeah, I I enjoy the heck out of river fishing, me personally. And I I know, I know that the ocean fishing, you know, you can go catch. Different species, it, it's different and species, that, yeah. and anything. But it, I don't know, it's something majestic about that river. Just you know, when you was a kid, you always oh, yeah. thought about those catfish. I know y'all heard the stories about them in the Mississippi Big as a school river. bus, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, and you always hear the stories about how dangerous the river is. And I mean, the river, oh, ain't it, no, it ain't no joke. Yeah. But I've been out of them with your daddy in a sixteen foot <laughs> yeah, boat, twenty five horse motor. I've been I there. Don't want to be that there. That is sketchy. Yeah, that was pretty oh, sketchy. Like a, and the river was a rough. John boat. Yeah. yeah, there ain't no sixteen by forty eight oh, with the twenty five. No way. It I'm wasn't. Done. We was that was 
mild, very mild the other day compared to what it was. was at, yes. Like it was during the springtime and the water had came up and a lot of that, you know, water, I guess, coming from up north. And that, that jug was rolling. There was so much well, debris. We always river. fished back then at Tunica Cutoff, and Daddy would always fish on the River Fall. Yeah, so you, get to, if, yeah you, get, you get Tunica Cutoff. If the river wasn't was falling a foot to foot and a half every day, you wasn't going to catch fish. So that's how we would fish it. His daddy would watch the news. They'd always show the river levels on the news in the morning. And when you seen it to where it was falling a foot, two foot a day, we was going to tune cut off. I mean, you literally would get, we fish Catawba worms. You got I maybe mean, me and my dad or Mark and dad, whatever. And then you'd have two poles a piece. You'd bait it up, throw it out and bait your second one, throw it. And then reel the fish in on the first one. It's yeah. already on. Yeah, oh, you catch, catch 60 and 70 fish a day. Yeah. Oh, you made me a firm believer of the Catawba worms, bring them to the house. Oh, they're yeah. game changers. Them fish in that lake had never seen one. Uh, and they thought it was like a lot crap. of people don't know what one is, but I, we, we've always fished yeah. with them. I ain't I never seen any to get. If y'all still have some trees, that yeah, have them? We, we got, got them, but got they don't. Not like it used to be. Well, they don't produce. You got you got a male and female tree, and them worms. I don't remember if it's a male. I think it's a male tree. The worms will not get on. They only get on female tree. Hmm. But Daddy's got six trees now, five trees left, and I think it's just two that actually will keep a worm on it. We need to go over there. That old house over there, Ben's old house, and see with them big trees because they used to stay behind. loaded. Yeah. But Those them tre- natural trees that been there, he planted yeah. them. Daddy planted. Daddy his. planted his. Most oh. of the time, you find them, somebody's got them, and you you get the seed pod or whatever off of them. Or I've always like seen them on when we was a kid. It was a guy had a pasture and it was always on a fence row. We'd there go there. Used there to be, ain't there one up here on a courthouse? Or it used to be. Probably. Uh, there's one up there that looks similar to. I don't know if it is not. It's a great big one. See, the one over down the road from the house, the base of that tree, shoot, ain't much smaller than the bottom <laughs> yeah, of this room. It's big. It's, it's huge. Big. Wow. Like, it's it's ginormous. <clears throat> so do, those, do the worms just come back to those trees every year? Yeah. They actually they they go on the ground. Yeah, they go on the ground. They're dormant. Tree. But they hatch out and turn into uh, moss or something, don't they? Yeah, I think they do. It's Man. got to. It's been, I never looked up the life. I, look, I, just, I just know they can bait. To. I mean, I don't, it's some kind of like caterpillar type worm, right? Bait. I know wasps will kill them. Yeah, wasp, wasp, and dirt, wasp and dirt dauber will eat them. They look about like an army worm to me. It's real close. And army worms do that. They spin the big, you know, they'll mm. spin the web. They'll go down on the grass and eat at night, but then they'll get back up in the tree and web up and then hatch out. But they, when do you, what time of year do you find those worms, the Catawba worms? Dead it's heat of summer. summer. It's hot. So June, July. So army worms are always usually bad in late August when it's super hot like that, too. But huh, that's, I, we need to. That'd be another. Find, yeah, that's another video, yeah. Mark. Heck we no. bring some in here. You, are they live when you catch them? Yeah, you yeah. It's, it says that it does turn into. Uh, I don't know how moth. to say the word. It's moth. Yeah, yeah. There's two ways. You either got to climb the tree because most of these trees they don't got so big you can't shake them. Yeah. You either got to climb a tree or get you a 20 foot piece of PVC pipe and get to whooping right, it. We'll put that old hooey in up here. <laughs> 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 Just saw the limb off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do a little pruning. Could you reach it with that hooey? Yeah. yeah. We put we double them up like we did. Yeah, I was always the tree climber as a kid. Me and my cousin. You had to go we, up. Yeah, we you go to the top and start jumping on limbs and knocking them out, working your way down. And then somebody pick them up on the ground. Pick them up the ground. I mean, we've gone and got filled up. We we'd literally fill up five gallon buckets of them. Dang! Mm-hmm. And then you freeze them. You got a the way to do it. Freeze blanch it. them and then freeze them. Yeah, because like used boiling to, water, like mm-hmm. huh. the, don't yeah. be boiling. It's just got to be almost like 170 degree water. So like if you, kills them instantly, and then if you just put water in a Ziploc bag and freeze them, they turn black and they shrivel up. And especially, you know, you, you can't. But or a lot of people, uh, I don't know if they, I don't think they put them in hot water to kill them first. But they'll put them in a bag of meal. That way they don't they don't they don't stick together when they're frozen. Yeah. You just put them in a meal and meal preserves them in a huh. freezer bag. Them things suck pulling off the hook. <laughs> they don't want to come off. That's why when Mark brought them out to the house. You catch like multiple leather. fish. Yeah. We catch three or four catfish on one worm. They don't come off the hook. Yeah. You pull Is that them. why people start using them? I don't know. I really I mean, we've don't. always, I was old enough to remember. That's and a lot of times you won't catch like crap fish. Like you won't catch many carp or gar or nothing on a catabo worm. You'll catch catfish, you know. Yeah. And you might catch, heck, I don't know if I've caught anything else but a catfish on a catabo worm. I don't think I have. I caught a turtle on <laughs> that turtle was just hungry. That pond yeah. turtle. <laughs> now you put a night crawl in there, you're gonna catch everything yeah, in the river, yeah. you know. <clears throat> so we always fish with perch, crawfish, night crawl. We used to have ponds behind our house. One of them was nothing but crawfish in it, one of them was pond perch, but you don't never heck, I don't know anywhere you can even 
so-called catch pond perch no more. No, most of those perch ponds, they... It's all cattle it's all ponds all, or something. Yeah, they, they didn't... I don't know if cranes got all the fish out of them or what, but that, we were the same way. We'd go out there, just a bare hook. Mm-hmm. If you had to use any worm, it was just a pinch yeah. and load a five-gallon bucket up with them and run trot lines or yep. bottom fish or something like that with perch. They're about the size. Most of them are that size David had of the yeah. shad, shad mm-hmm. or but maybe just a touch wide. bigger. Two or three yeah. inch. Yeah, that's the ones yeah. you want. You want them whole and just hook them in the tail where they would still swim. Swim. How come you, the Catawba worms, you fish with them when they were live, or do you always fish with them? No, if you, no, if you catch them, and, I mean, usually we always set aside like a Saturday or weekend or something like that. When Daddy got off work, we'd go gather them up. But most of, I mean, if you was going to fish within a day or two, yeah, it'd be alive. But yeah. most of the time, we'd get them, I say, get them and freeze them while they last all year. I prefer them when they were alive. Oh, it's still, definitely better. They're still moving and wiggling around, better. so but you know still some stay of you, on the hook just as good. Well, yeah. like your flatheads are predators, so yeah. a lot of times they won't hardly mess with nothing dead. Yeah, you know, they won't so see it. That moving. worm still got a heartbeat moving around. Well, I don't know about a heartbeat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sounds I mean? good. It's sounds mo- good. Yeah, anyway. It's, it's making some movement in the water, so it's <laughs> it's gonna hunt it down. Well, Jamie, on this week you said we want to talk about some stuff about the deer hunting about the farm, so. We're going to get to that? <laughs> yeah, we're getting to it. What worked and what we need to improve on for our next hunting season. Yeah, so like like food plots, what we yeah. think held up the best or that we're most impressed with. And the grain plots. They handled, hammered. Our turnips did great preseason. Like turnips, season. you kind of got a small window of yeah. opportunity there. Once that frost gets hard, hard, it'll, it'll take a few frosts. But if that like freeze like we had, shoot, now I never think bounce back. I think the ground where them turnips are is gonna be jam up now. Yeah, we we'll get some lime on it. That'd be really good. But that you that's know. the whole purpose of like planting um, a crop that's got you know the tubers in the ground, like turnips or the daikons or something, because it does what exactly what you said. It breaks up your hard pack. Gets and nutrients in it. It's new, you have say, all those that? rotten, stinking things gonna put a lot of fertilizer in mm-hmm. there. But the grains. That grain mix that we planted was green, and the freeze knocked it. What it browned it for a week. Yeah, it comes right back, back up, man. It came back and thrived. So what we'll do probably next year, what we'll do different with those fall plots. If we do, you know, some turnips, it'll be like smaller patches of turnips, and then yeah. more of the grain field is separated instead of mm-hmm. some of them. We I did plant them together, mm-hmm. and the grain didn't do as well because it mixed with that brassica. Yeah. yeah, it shaded them out, and the brassica grew out. so fast and so big that it choked everything a lot of stuff out now it did come back in this in that straight turnip patch it had mm-hmm. some grain in it when the turnips fizzled out the grain came home i guess the seeds laid there dormant until they could get some sunlight yeah my, my, yeah i would think so you know some of it was already there it just yeah. maybe it just kind of come on around once the sun started getting on it but next year we definitely need to se- separate those brassicas from the you know from the grain this kind of isn't to do with actually what we, well, I guess it is, but it's not necessarily food plot. But I learned more with the Eco Edge, that's leaving right. some stuff out there. <clears throat> that's what I was going to say. Yeah. And like plantation, it's plenty of times I got out of that stand with deer in the field and walked and never just like never disturbed them. They never knew I was there. Like you could walk in and out of that field, no problem, never get spooked. And comparing that field to South Trunk, we realized then not, you know, we planted a whole field and turned yeah. it. We killed the deer moving on that field just because there was no transition nowhere in that a field. Bare ass field, you yeah. know, and, that, and that's what a lot of people get kind of get in their head is you know want to see that big, slick, clean, it don't green work field. green field. Yeah, and you need to leave be it pretty. wild. No, you need to leave it wild around the edges. They're a lot more apt to come out, stand in the grass, ease around in the grass, and not have to just break plumb across the field and run across it. And that works from. Deer season, turkey season, Anything. rabbit hunting, quail hunting, whatever. I mean, it's, that it's, plantation field, I mean, when turkey season comes up, I mean, if you're standing way down there where you're parking at and you glass down through there and you see those birds, you got an opportunity to yeah. you get kind of ease up there close them. enough to them. I mean, you ain't going to sneak up on them, but you can get close enough to them, like to the stand or something, sit under the stand and call and draw one over it to you. I guarantee you, uh, <laughs> Mark put the hunting simulator move on them. He's getting on them. <laughs> we'll get them. Belly crawl. They never would have known if you got down like you did and went down that eco edge. They never think, was there. Yeah, I would like to do that on that pond stand. And easy. Coming around it, I think really, especially where it stands at right in front of it, because you got all behind it's all pretty much sage grass and a yeah. little road coming in, so there's nothing. 
And Nothing that front, blocking it. That front part of that plot is not – the soil's not really, it really ain't, good not, right uh, there, and it gets a lot of sun, and it's just blistered. And, you know, with that eco-edge and that grass will thrive right there. I think if you – looking back, like if you plant a quality product that – can keep up with the browse, you're better off to have just as much cover as you are food. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion. I think so too. I mean, to a really, I mean, you, a couple acres of cover, a couple acres of food. You know, you need to have an equal out ratio. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where this weekend I went rabbit hunting guy's place. They got, it's all pines and they cleared out areas, but there's no cover from the deer. When it walks out in the pine, it's out in wide open. Yeah. And that's, he was saying they don't, if they do come in a food plot, it's real, real late in the afternoon, and they ain't messing around during the day getting on it. You know, you know, one of the other things about doing that, too, is not just for the deer, but, you know, if you've got any kind of game birds or turkeys or, you know, rabbits, things like that stay in that, you know, so. Hide from predators. That's right. Hide from the predators, but also your predators, are, the more of those you have out there, the less deer they're going to, you know, fawns they're going to drag down because they can, you know, get some of those little game birds or rabbits or something like that it's in that a, grass too you're juggling yeah. what you're doing mm. so are we gonna make that a goal this year to add more hunter cover on our i plots? say start it in the spring i mean like that's, right now yeah well once yeah so one, once we start with that summer plot which you know one of the things we're going to change but not change completely is you know when we go into those summer plots it's going to be a vetch and buckwheat mix on everything we got except for the clover plots and we've established a couple of those we're going to keep clover on but we're playing that vetch again just because of the we still got a heavy browse there. Yeah. And well it that vetch held up way longer in a year than I thought it would. Yeah, Man, way past frost. Yeah. Well you can I mean, hunt at them fields. Yeah. Like, over it was vetch. after Thanksgiving and it was still so enough they could, could feed on. It. Yeah. You know. And they were. Yeah. On the edges where it was. Where they got used to feeding on it. Now I don't know if we got lucky or because I've read some things, some people say, Well, the, you know, you you go to plant and vetch and deer not used to eating it, they're not gonna touch it. Shoot. But that goes with anything, I yeah. think. I mean, if they're hungry, they're gonna eat it. That's, I think with us, them deer were they were scavenging so much before. Yeah, that as soon as something showed up, they were on it. You it know, was like a buffet. Now, granted, if you had your herd management right to where your numbers are correct and they're not over browsing stuff, it may take them a little bit to get on it. But if they're starving, they're gonna eat it. You know, yeah, yeah, and love it. Yeah, and that's kind of where that buckwheat comes in with the you know with that mix we're gonna do this year. When we had it in the mix last year, we just had a, other things in there that were not. They yeah. weren't compatible with what we were planting. It just didn't work out. Couldn't manage it. Couldn't spray it. Couldn't do anything with it. But uh, that buckwheat comes up, and it's it's something they know, and they'll eat the crap out of it. And the buckwheat held up in yeah. plantation. It's still little sprigs of it. You know, the last time I hunted, you still could see some out there. But that's you know, some things were changing. Some things were going my, minor changes. You know, but I think the one of the biggest thing is keeping that grass around our fields. Oh, that would have been those edges for them to, yeah. especially like style trunk. That whole fence d- down that whole field, you know, will probably be grass next. Yeah, year. yeah. I think there, and you know, to the left, kind of below the pond levy, let that grow up from the pond levy over to that ditch to give them a transition place where they can get across right there. Because I was looking back, it might have been the first year we hunted that side of that property, and you had a bunch of videos, and it was like. It was thirty. Yeah, it was un. It was unreal how many deer we'd see out of there, and then but we had all that sage grass halfway out in that field, and the plot wasn't that big. You know, right. it worked big time. Yeah. Worked really good. Well, half the other plot up against the ditch side was always sage grass too. Yeah, we never planted that close to the ditch, so that was the big takeaway. To you think, and I, I'm the same way. I was like, man, well, look how big this field is. We can grow something. Like you drive down the road, you see these farmers growing yeah. fields. Every bit of real estate they got's got something growing on it. But hunting, you got to have a different mindset. As long as you've got the food for them, you need an equal amount of that cover too. So, well, too, when we look at hunt, like when we look at farmers' fields, what are you looking at? You're looking at beans and corn. What is that? That's thick cover. Yeah, I mean, it's not like these little turnips that are six or eight inches tall. It's you know, a full bean field covers ninety percent of that deer. Oh, and, and yeah, and all during that green season of bean growth, you look out in that field, you won't see a deer. Yeah, they you'll see the heads, there. maybe. Oh, yeah. So I mean, you, I guess it's two different crops, two different ways to look at it. You know, I wouldn't mind, you know, using some standard corn as a eco edge. I don't yeah. know how long in the year it would hold up, but yeah, we've got some corn, and we're going to try to do that with some of it too. And we got that planter, so that's going to be one thing. I did notice something, Jamie, you had on here talking about maintenance time. 
And that's a big thing. Yeah, we kind of slacked a little bit at the end of the season because we was rushing getting everything in by deer season. But, yeah, we yes, it's time now to get in, get your tractor ready, bush hog ready, planter ready, everything good to go. And that way, cause you, I mean, like I say, in the fall, that's what we, we was working around the rain. And so mm-hmm. spring gets here, you kind of do the same thing. Yeah, we definitely hooked that planter up because we still hadn't ran it. So we practice run. Yeah. yeah. See how I'm going to get the big tractor probably Saturday, Friday or Saturday and carry it to John Deere and get it serviced up and a little maintenance stuff fixed on it and have it good to go. You definitely don't want problems when you got to get down there and work. No, that's if frustrating. You're like us where you got, you know, a weekend or something like that where you got to, or, you know, we go down that's on most Fridays. People, and, yeah. yeah. We're, we're just like everybody else. We don't go down there all week. You know, sometimes we do if we got behind, we have to go down there to get something in before rain or whatever. But most of the time we're just doing it on the weekends and, Last thing you want is get down there and something tear up or break or something needs oil changed in it. Yeah, and you don't wait it to the last mm-hmm. minute and it's messing you up on your time. Well, we got to do uh, stand maintenance too. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Mikey's going to do that probably Friday. Man, I, y'all think we could get some spray foam on some of them stands and seal them up a little like South or South Trump, you know, seal probably it up a little be. better. A metal, a metal stand. Yeah, I metal mean, stands, I mean, we can probably get that foam and put on the tin. That's the hardest part on them is the way the tin lays yeah. it, corrugated tin lays. It's always yeah. grew for them to get in. We can go back. We can go back and do that. You know, anytime. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. Main thing is like get them sprayed down with that bife and just try to keep, keep the walls bugs and walls out of yeah. them and get, get the, the heaters, heaters and out. Like that and all the garbage. And I do know we didn't do it this year before deer season next year. We got to clean the windows. Some of them windows so yeah. <laughs> hazed up, and, and that's what it, <laughs> that one's from for spraying wall spray up around it. It's just didn't got film on the windows. I don't know if I want like get some window cleaner wipes or something and just keep it in the stand next year because that and I think you know you've done it in plantation but get some curtains put up yeah you know, that makes a big deal I look they do have the camouflage windows available now for the uh, hunters condo yeah, hunters Force condo is a really? it's like cool. a see through mesh like window tent kind of but you can see through it and it's got a it's got the little round holes in it. That way you can keep the window closed and you don't, yeah, that's the biggest yeah. thing some of these people don't think about is like a lot of these box stands, yeah, they're nice, but if you got windows on both sides, they silhouette the crap out of yeah. it quick. I saw it quickly. That's why I bought that material and made me some, I didn't even have a curtain rod. I used a grill tape. tape. Yeah, get tape on it. And it worked. Went across the top of it and had it to where if you needed to see, you could peek a little, but. We'll that, be going to, getting it to Sportsman Condo yeah. for Jay, we'll be going to West Point. Jay he ordered more. Oh, did he order him more? He ordered a, yeah. the Bow Hunter edition. Okay. It's Where's tight. he putting it on? His hat by his hat. Going back yeah. to Indiana? Really? They don't sell them up there? Mm-mm. He's good. Well, I and say he's, he's already importing them. <laughs> he's looking. Yeah. He hadn't ordered a Sportsman condo yet. He's That's on his list, but he found a redneck blind dealer up there close. He's going to oh, go look yeah. at one of those. Because those are good, but they're nice. But they're expensive. Paper. Well, that bow hunter Sportsman is what? 18. Yeah, that's almost two. Yeah. So another thousand, you can get a redneck, you know? Yeah. Depends on what he wants to do with it, too. I mean, for the. Yes, there is. I love the sportsman. That's one of my favorite stands to hunt that we have. And yes, you can buy a better, quieter, nicer stand. But man, the black stands. They sportsman condos have been my favorite. They've been they've been good, held up good. Well, just moving them. I mean, if other, you than drop break, it, other than breaking the windows, if you dropped it, that's about you know it's you ain't gonna break the glass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean you could. You drop nothing one of against those other stands that we got, but you know, or limb they poke a hole in it as soon as we got it off the trailer. You know they. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The fiberglass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fiberglass, and I mean they last. They last a long time. Mm-hmm. I still think old Trump's my favorite one to hunt. Though. Oh, <laughs> me and you hunted it last, last weekend. Season, we were yeah. stretched out. Man, you got so much room. I didn't even get in that stand this me year. And you I've hunted never it. hunted it. The big one. Yeah, me and you hunted it one time. We sure did. I forgot yeah. about that. We saw that little bucks out there. That's right. We I did think hunt it. the only stand I did not hunt this year. I didn't hunt Crossroads this year. You didn't? Uh uh-uh. uh. I didn't hunt in crossroads and I don't think I hunted Waylands at all. I didn't go to woods. I didn't go to woods. I didn't go to woods. I didn't what go to Waylands. I didn't hunt Trump. Why do we get favorite? Like why do why do we do that? That's where the deer are. <laughs> we, we talk. <laughs> Those other stands are really good. They just I don't know. I I had to, I was trying I didn't hunt them because I was trying some of those other spots we had, the blinds and the, you know, ladder stands and Oh, we need to go get that out. Yeah, or move it. Blind. Yeah. We got one that's going to be trash. Oh, yeah. It won't take them long. The yeah. whole top caved in on that one. On oh, power line? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that last time. I think snow got on it. Snow got on it. Liam hit it or what? 
a right away crew. But it was old. old. I mean, it's old. Is the chairs to everything still in that other one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like, bags and everything is in there. You just don't want mice to chew it up. Yeah. That's the bad thing. It ain't that the blind. I don't well, the heat gets there. them more than anything. Sun, yeah. Direct sunlight yeah. all year. It bleaches them out. Yeah. Bees them, whatever. Oh, dude, the trailer there looks just like a year round. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good blind. I don't know what brand it is. It's been there for five years. Still hunts it. Which one? Five yards from his trailer. Right there, you that know, they see Oh, yeah, 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 on the road. He put yeah. the blind there before they held the trailer again. That's yeah. how long it's been there. <laughs> oh. We're going to move in blinds around, get them set up for turkey season, too. So, And I won't. That's we found out this year is I love the blinds, our ground blinds, the box stands, but late in the season, you need something in the woods. So I'm going gonna, gonna to waste, waste some options out next year for some yeah. more wooded areas to hunt versus food plots for late in the season. Well, if you get a ladder stand, don't get that freaking muddy stand. <clears throat> you don't like the bar in it? Man, not that too, man. Yeah. Somebody hit you right in the ass. Is right? that the one of mine? No, it's the one I bought this the year. The one, the other one? Is yours a muddy? Don't they make a flat bench two-man that you, that you can scoot across the whole thing? I think yeah. the one I got is like that. <clears throat> yeah, they, they, they make a solid bench two-man. This one just had two of those. It had, it's pretty much two seats, and it's got yeah. like a bridge in the middle where they the they hook the material together, and you can't. I always like turning sideways in there and putting my feet out. You know, I always buy a two man ladder stand instead yeah. of buying a single man. Anyways, you never know we're gonna have a kid, but also That's they right. got more Next room. room. And to rig you up an old cushion in it that just goes across the whole thing. You know? That's how I did that one of mine. I had at the house. That thing will be full of water. Uh, <laughs> yours is the one we moved over there to the. Uh, Kudzu. Yeah. Kudzu. It's not like that. It's mm-hmm. a full mm-hmm. bench. That was a Amazon special. I don't think I gave it like $79, 100 bucks. Four years now, ain't it? Yeah, it had a roof kit. and I mean, it's it's a nice little stand. The roof held up on it? Mm, mm-hmm. That's yeah. gone. Oh, is it? I tore that thing off. Get we put it up there, and it. I got in it one morning. It was a big old sack just hanging in my face. <laughs> and I looked around. I was like, man, that thing's full of my rotten leaves. You ain't got no choice. You ain't got no choice. Dump it. Poke a pocket knife in the bottom yeah. of it and let it out. I went ahead and ripped it all off because it kept just flapping around and getting mm. in your face. Yeah, they build one of stands like I sent you a picture of it, was sixty-eight foot to the <laughs> yeah. stand. That's crazy. I think they're in Texas. You could put an elevator in that. <laughs> That's a long way up there. Yeah. What yeah. about that old eleven hundred forty-five yard shot that dude put on that man? Y'all look at that TikTok that video. I seen it. I, I didn't know how far he shot though. It's a long way. I couldn't hardly see. Bullet, you can see the bullet arch and hit. See I can't the they showed it on what they call it like the. Moisture trail, vapor trail, yeah, vapor, vapor, vapor trail. trail. Yeah, that hot bullet run through that cold air. Uh, dude, t- it took me, dude, hollering. Oh yeah, Better. we can't say what can't he say said. What he said. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. He was I don't excited. know how it's still on TikTok. Honestly, they'll pull that down. Yeah, it's probably gone now. Yeah. That ain't his only one either. He's got one <laughs> shooting hogs at about five hundred yards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he smoked one of them. If I could do five hundred thousand. That thing's pretty much safe. I probably ain't get oh, I can tell you, they didn't mean to on that. <laughs> yeah, they did not mean to because everybody, you could hear the. Everybody just yeah. got wound up when that deer fell over. Mark's rifle will probably shoot that. I'll try. <laughs> no, I ain't done that. I'm, I actually talked to John the other day. I'm going to try to get out there when we get back next week and go shoot his 1,000-yard range. He's got some stuff set up now. So. Put that ways. 350 on 1,000. Man, you could take a nap before it got there. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a minute. Yeah. Well, well, we ain't really cook nothing like Yeah, that. we ain't cook nothing, so we're going to get to skip that one because we didn't go to camp. Well, it was Super Bowl, so. It's been I a, did go. We got some catfish recipes coming. Catfish, got some duck. We're gonna cook on. Oh yeah, I'm working on a rabbit recipe. I'm I'm excited about that. To do. Tenderized, boneless, tenderized fried rabbit. You get a swamp rabbit. We can put it on a 12 inch roll, <laughs> big roll. <laughs> <laughs> did we talk about that sandwich yet? That ah. you did. I don't know. Yeah, if I think did. so. Yeah, I think we did. I think Man, we did. did. I'm ready. Yeah, for we talked about all the recipes. Yeah, okay. Already. I need to make that again. Yeah, that's some good stuff. But take us on out of here, Mark. It's been time. Yeah. But I appreciate y'all listening. If y'all got any questions, of course, send it to us. Let us know. Y'all make sure to check out the Buck Junkie website. Send us some topics. <laughs> yeah, topics. It does hey, it does get hard this time of year. We get done with hunting and it kinda a little bit of a lull, so we'll take your we'll take your advice. But I think we got some fishing to do now. So. We got some guests coming up. Yeah. We got we're gonna try to get David on here and then we got another uh land habitat management type guy we're going to try to get on and several things but we appreciate y'all listen and we'll see y'all next time see y'all next time we gone